In this episode of In the Trenches with Dave Lapham brought to you by First Star Logistics, we visit with Kevin Walker. Everybody's talked about ad nauseum all week long. The last Bengals victory in the playoffs was January 6th of 1991. It was in Cincinnati, and the Bengals beat the Oilers 41-14. to The following week, the first loss in this losing streak in the playoffs that the Bengals, it's now 31 years, January 13th and 91 in Los Angeles, the Raiders beat the Bengals 20-10. to And during that game, Kevin Walker tackled Bo Jackson, and it seemed kind of like an innocuous play, no big deal. Bo Jackson dislocated his hip and was never the same athlete. We're going to visit with Kevin Walker in this episode and find out his take on the whole thing. Find out what he thinks about this edition of the Cincinnati Bengals in the playoffs against the Raiders. You're going to like what he has to say. You're in the trenches once again with Dave Lapham, brought to you by First Star Logistics, and we are in our outstanding studios, and we're joined by an outstanding guest, the one and only Kevin Walker, linebacker for the Cincinnati Bengals out of University of Maryland. How you doing, my man? Doing well, man. Doing well. Good to be in the trenches with you today. Ah, uh, there you go. There you go. You did a heck of a job in the trenches for, for many years of football, high school, college, National Football League. But we're gonna uh, we're gonna talk about most specifically, since the uh, Cincinnati Bengals are playing the Raiders on, on Saturday at 4.30 in the playoffs, we're going to go back a little bit. And January 6th of 91 in Cincinnati is the last time the Bengals won a playoff game. Cincinnati beats Houston 41-14 to on January 6th of 91. What do you remember about that football game first and foremost, Kev? Well, you know, it it was always a big rivalry between us and, and, and the Oilers. And so there's always uh, a lot of tension, a lot of energy, um, bad blood to say the least. So it was always a fun game, a lot of trash talking, which was uh, always fun. But I tell you to come out with a big win like that against a, a you know, division rival was, was huge. It was really exciting and, and um, a great memory. Yeah. And uh, the coaches, the coaches seem to, you know, get into it a little bit. Uh, you think most specifically <laughs> when Glanville was coaching there? Yeah, that was that was a little something something going on there. All right, so you win that football game and you advance in the playoffs. And then you have to travel to Los Angeles at that time, the Los Angeles Raiders to play the Raiders. So a week later, January thirteenth of ninety one, you go to L.A. and and the Raiders win the football game twenty to ten. During the course of that football game. There's the famous play where Bo Jackson's running the football. Kevin Walker comes in to make a play on him, and Bo Jackson suffers a severe injury that ultimately, you know, ends his career, unfortunately. And, I mean, that's just the, the nature of the beast when you're playing football. Those things happen. Take us through that play, Kevin. Take us through what you remember. Take us through every step of that. Well, you know, as I think back on it, you know, we, we certainly had a game plan around the, the talent and ability of um, Bo Jackson. So, you know, for that week specifically, we had, a, I guess, a lack of a better term, a bastardized bear front. Huh. So uh, with that, the Mike linebacker position I played, obviously, you know, would go to the, the strength of the defense and line up outside the tight end. Numbers game, so they only had one way to go. You know, so we give him one way to run. And if, if you can contain that and take half the field away from Bo, we felt like we had a chance to, uh, you know, contain him and make a play. But uh, he started off, I guess, coming downhill, you know, to my side, our right. And uh, he had nowhere to go. He just turned in reverse field. And as quick as a hiccup, as they say, he was he was up on the secondary right now. So I just took an angle and uh, got on my horse, brother, and, and, and tried to prevent a touchdown. And you did. You certainly did do that. And um, that, what what was it like? You, you hit him, and and you're you're taking him to the ground. And literally, he's so darn strong. He kind of like he pulls his leg out of his hip socket, basically, doesn't he? I mean, for lack of a, uh, it might might be a little bit too much for some people listening and watching. But I mean, he he basically. What what did it feel like to you when it happened? Did it feel as severe as it ultimately was, or what did you think was going on? Uh. 
at the time, really nothing major at all. It was just a, a regular, everyday sideline tackle. Um, when I got into him, I, I, I just, uh, you know, locked my arms and, and I felt him try to pull away, tried to try to break the tackle. And, um, I just had a grip. I wasn't letting go. He's going to have to drag me the balance of the way. <laughs> but, um, I guess as he pulled out and I pulled him towards me, he obviously dislocated his hip, but you know, at the time certainly didn't think anything really, um, Honestly, I thought that at the time he just fell on the football when he lunged forward and knocked the, maybe knocked the wind out of himself. Really? And oh. uh, he got up and um, walked off the field. So I, I didn't think there was um, anything significant that uh, transpired with that play at all. Man, when you think about that, to have a dislocated hip, but to have so strong a muscle group around it and everything to to be able to get up and just walk off the football field, that that's, uh, that's incredible because ultimately – you know, he really was never able to run again like he did prior to. Uh, it it, it turned, turned out there was some substantial damage done there. But how strong was that dude to be able to just get up and walk off the football field like that? Well, that's incredible. You know, I remember seeing a show, I know it's been a few years back, I guess, uh, when they were covering the extent or what transpired during the injury. And for him to dislocate it from what the doctor's perspective was saying, it's an incredible amount of strength just to even uh, sustain an injury of that magnitude. It's almost impossible huh. to be able to to have that much strength and force to pull the the uh, the, the leg out of the hip socket. Just to correct, do that. crazy. I mean, that's unbelievable torque and force. Unbelievable. Isn't it? it's, yeah, it's unbelievable. Nuts. And then it just kind of like I guess what rolled back into place and he was able to get up and and walk. I mean, that's uh, that that guy. I mean. What was it like playing him? I remember that. I remember specifically that game, going out in the field early and watching him come out on the football field and run full, you know, 100 and, 110 yard striders, jog across the field, run another 110 yard strider, and you know, break a sweat. And I'm not kidding you. I'm looking at the size and the speed combination, the ratio on that guy, and I'm like, this is an athletic freak. I mean, I, I don't think I've ever seen anybody put together like Bo Jackson was put together that could run as fast as Bo Jackson. And I, and I played with Herschel Walker, who is another one, you know, that it doesn't take long to call roll. You know, when you're talking about right. this guy, there's not many on the list, but to watch him um, in, in shorts and a t-shirt, I was like, Oh my gosh, man, this is, this is unbelievable. What was it? What was he like in a game? How fast, how strong, what was he like? Well, I tell you um, earlier in the year, I think it was uh, several weeks Prior to, we were out in L.A. to play the Raiders, and uh, he broke one against us, I believe, about 94 yards. And throughout my entire career, I don't think I've ever seen a human being or two human beings run that fast, uh, him and Rod Jones. I tell you what, when they were out the gate and uh, when you open it up and you're running full speed and all you see is five yards distance, 10, 15, 20, they just <laughs> – 30. <laughs> <laughs> it's incredible. Something to see. I know you, people talk about it often. You know, it's hard to get an appreciation of how good athletes are until you're on the field or at field level to be able to truly experience their their speed and agility, et cetera. But he was a phenomenal athlete. Man, really Rod, Jones. Rod Jones was on the track team at SMU, right, as well as the yeah, football team. Yeah, he sure he was. was yeah. a sprinter. I mean, a, you know, a collegiate sprinter, you know, maybe a guy that could qualify for the Olympic sprint team and, and, and big Bo Jackson is is running and he can't count. that's unbelievable that really is unbelievable yeah don't he, make linebackers with hamstrings that could turn over that fast brother <laughs> <laughs> i hear i hear that what else do you remember about that uh that 20 to 10 uh game out there in in los angeles anything else come to mind well you know um i think early in the goings we had a i think a fumble recovery that i think barney bussy recovered a fumble which i if I remember correctly, early in the game, maybe first quarter or something like that, and if the call didn't go our way, uh, which I felt truly was a turnover. So that was a momentum stopper, uh, you know, at that point in time. But uh, when you're on the road, you got to make plays. You need to have some some good fortune, keep the crowd out of, keep the uh, momentum down. But uh, I remember just just grinding. You know, we, it was hard for us to seem to get uh, anything going because I thought the caliber of offense that we had certainly could could put up more than 10 points right. against anybody in the league at that point in time. Right. Right. 
and and how important was it to have that home field advantage when you guys spanked the Houston Oilers like you did 41-14? How how big was it to be at home? Well, it's exciting. I mean, there was nothing like playing in the jungle. You know, the fans were intense, uh, just a lot of excitement, a lot of energy. So it was good, especially when you play a, you know, rivalry like, uh, uh, you know, the Houston Oilers. You know, going down there to their place was something else. You know, the House of Pain and how they touted all of that. But to uh, come home to the jungle and, and, and have an opportunity to play in front of the home fans and uh, play off that energy it was, it was a phenomenal experience. It was, it was a good time and, uh, you know, a big win for us. Certainly. So this year's edition of the Cincinnati Bengals with a 10 and seven record, our AFC North division champions, and they get a, a home game, home playoff game. And their, their opponent is none other than the Las Vegas Raiders. We're talking Oakland. We're talking LA. We're talking Las Vegas. We're talking the Raiders. <laughs> <But> the, Raiders <laughs> the Raiders come to come to Cincinnati um, and the Bengals had have beaten them during the regular season. And it was a 16-13 football game with 11 and a half minutes to play. And the Bengals pull away. They run the ball real well in the second half. Joe Mixon rips a 20-yard mm -hmm. touchdown run to kind of seal the uh, seal the game. Um, what do you remember the first time you played in a playoff game in the National Football League? How different was the speed of the game? Well, you know, I think it's – believe it or not, I think the game is always fast, but, but it – Believe it or not, it's just a different level. It just seems that, you know, the intensity, there is no tomorrow. So, yep. you know, everything is on the line. So guys are a little nick, banged up, they're going. They don't want to be out. They want to be a part of it. I think just the energy, uh, the intensity is just so different postseason than it is, you know, throughout the, the length of a, a normal regular season schedule. So it, it, it's exciting, and it's what it's all about. You know, you hear people talk about it. There's nothing like playoff football. It's nothing like playing in the postseason. There's truly nothing like it. Amazing experience. So how how much would you have liked to have had a week off like the Bengals uh, did this last regular season game in Cleveland with just about as many starters as they possibly could? Um, defensively, everybody pretty much had had the, had the day off. And then there was an injury in the sec, – couple of injuries in the secondary where Mike Hilton had to play and he wasn't scheduled to play. But that that was sparse. I mean, that those examples are few and far between. A lot of guys got to rest and get their bodies right, their minds right. How important do you think that is? Or are you of the school where I want to continue to play, I want to continue momentum? What are you thinking there, Kevin? Well, I think that, you know, I think from both – standpoints you 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 can level you know an opinion that um in either way you know i mean towards any, either one of those uh outcomes but myself personally i mean with given the length of a schedule especially in the physical nature of football to have a bye week back in our day obviously didn't exist but right. once you start getting into you know double digits week 10 12 14 it starts to wear and tear on your on your body so i think that uh it's a benefit when you can uh Rest your starters, give them a week of um, rest, the rest of brains, rest their bodies, take care of themselves and 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 get ready to make a run for the for the big game. What's your as a defensive player, when you see Joe Burrow play, what's your first reaction to how he plays football? I tell you, he he's a competitor. You know, to me, I don't I don't know him personally, but how he comes across, he has total command of the offense and you know. He, he his leadership. I think that the, he is a competitor. He he wants to win at all costs, and I think it comes across, uh, you know, in the chances that he takes, the effort that he puts forth, every snap he lays it on the line. And I think that that's contagious. And when people see their quarterback, who, you know, typically when you think of a quarterback, you don't have a tough guy persona. You know what I'm saying? There's very yep. few that have played the game that line up and get after it. He's one of them. I mean, for sure. Uh, he's ready to play every day. He's prepared. Uh, he's a student of the game. He, he knows uh, the offense. He knows his progressions. Uh, he's got a phenomenal touch on the ball, and he's got some phenomenal tools uh, in his belt that he has access to to put a big play up on the board at any given snap. It's, it's, it's fun. It's exciting to see, and, and um, I really think he's a phenomenal player. So Kenny Anderson, 1981, won MVP. And in the playoffs in early 1982, we make it all the way to the Super Bowl and don't finalize it. 19, the Super Bowl 16. 
1988, Boomer Sison, MVP, uh, make it all the way through the playoffs, win the AFC Championship, get to the Super Bowl on Super Bowl 23, and can't finalize that. But in both cases, outstanding quarterback play, MVP quarterback play that led those football teams. Do you think Joe Burrow, the way he's playing, the numbers that he's put up, do you think the same thing? Do you think Joe Burrow is the type of quarterback the Bengals as a football team can get on his shoulders and ride all the way to the Super Bowl? Uh, without question. I mean, you know, the game has changed uh, dramatically. I mean, you know, by and large, you know, Mike Linebacker has been eliminated really from from the game today, you know, with so much uh, uh, pass oriented. And, you know, back in our day, I mean, if you were giving up, you know, 300 yards to a quarterback, that that's a big day. You know, I mean, Joe Burrow can hang five on 500 on you <laughs> any given week. So <laughs> prepping for that and getting prepared to uh, take on that challenge, you know, he can give you all you ask for right there. I'm telling you. So uh, I think he's well suited for the game of the day. I think the tools that he has available to him, you know, especially with Jamar Chase and his athleticism and, and his ability. I mean, his, his pure speed and quickness is, uh, would be a nightmare for any defense, I think. So you hit on Jamar Chase. Uh, let's talk about the weapons that this offense has and uh, Super Bowl 23 team, Boomer Sias and a quarterback, all the all these weapons. Uh, we have the same thing, Kenny Anderson, quarterback and receiver and tight end and all these weapons. You got Jamar Chase, you have T. Higgins, you have Tyler Boyd, you have Joe Mixon. I mean, that's that's a problem for a defense, isn't it? With without question, I mean, there is no doubt about it. I mean, you know, we had the good fortune, you know, back in our day. I mean, with um, you know, Icky Woods and, and James Brooks, Eddie Brown, Rodney Holman, you know, we certainly had some playmakers. But the you know the playmakers that uh, you know Joe Burrow has access to in today's game is 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 quite something. And they're and they're clicking on all cylinders. I mean, they're in the groove. I mean, they can take one to the house on any given play, which is it's, it's exciting really is let's let's flip to the other side of the football yeah. the defensive side of things when you watch this Cincinnati Bengals defensive football team what uh, what jumps out at you Kevin well um I think overall they, they're they're pretty solid um you know but historically for whatever reason it seems that you know Bengals on the defense side of football always have struggle with third down it's like we we get teams the third down and can't get them out and I think that you know to ultimately um, put yourself in a position where you can flip that third down conversion rate to your favor you could play against anybody but you know when you have the offenses and how prolific they are today when um, with a lot of quarterbacks heck they're they're four down quarterbacks. I mean, when you play against the Ravens, Chiefs, you know, it's now no longer a third down football. It's it's a full four down proposition that you have to uh, execute to get them off the field. And uh, the game has changed, now, I think, pretty dramatically in that in that way, in that regard, certainly. So the Raiders, uh, they didn't rest their starters. They couldn't. They had to win the football game. They went five full quarters, an entire overtime. Uh, they have to travel. East, they have a short week, Saturday night, uh, big emotional victory. Do you think that the momentum of that big win against the L.A. Chargers is a bigger factor in their favor than, than all the things that I just listed that might favor the Bengals in terms of matching up on Saturday at 430? Well, I think that, you know, mentally, I think that that's a – it's a good thing. I mean, they're going to have a lot of energy from a big win like that to have the opportunity to be in the postseason, especially after the adversity and 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 things that they faced as a football team this yeah. year. I think yeah. that speaks volumes to who they are character-wise. But when you start talking about the physicality of football, traveling time zones, that kind of thing, I think it becomes more of a, a physical proposition than it does a mental thing. I mean, you your your mind can be ready to play, as you know, but if your body's not there, you can't get any more out of it than what's in it. You know what I'm saying? So the wear and tear takes its toll. So I think that, you know, they're going to come out ready to play. There's no question about it. But I think that, you know, for the Bengals to be successful – they, they have to come out and play football and, and make it a physical game and, and, and swing momentum, you know, to their favor early. And I think you they have a you know, solid chance at it. Yeah, I agree. You mentioned a, a, a very key point, the adversity. I mean, you know, everybody talks about, oh, we face adversity. But, I mean, the Raiders, 
we're talking death. You know, we're talking things that were crazy that this football team had to deal with in, in some way, shape, or form. Um, exactly. It, it's 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 crazy. I mean, they 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 were they were dealing with the facts of life. There's no question about it. And in that case, that can even bond a team more, can it? I mean, it, it seems like that's the case for the Raiders. They seem to have an affinity for each other and a bond for each other that is very, very strong and hard to break. Yeah, I think it's, it's pretty evident by the results that they have been getting. But, you know, there's, there's as we discussed, there's no question in the adversity that they faced. And they pulled it together because, I mean, I tell you, Raiders weren't even in the discussion several weeks ago. But they just happen to hang around. Oh, you know what? They're in it. Oh, the Raiders have a chance all the way down to, you know, the final week of the season. I mean, it's pretty, a pretty incredible story when you think about it. Um, you know, so that said, I think that, um, you know, it speaks volumes to, you know, who they are as a team and the, and the bond that they have. They stuck through it because, again, you know, with media in your business all day, every day, uh, a lot of distractions, but they they've come together and 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 they made the plays necessary to win ball games and and um, I'm certain that they're going to be ready to line up and get after it on Saturday afternoon. It's interesting. The Bengals win three games in a row, their first three game winning streak, and then they rest everybody against Cleveland, and that winning streak ends. The Raiders have to win their last four games. They have to win every one of them. Mm. If they lose any one of their last four games, they're not in the playoffs. They've won four in a row coming into this playoff game. So really two of the hotter teams, you know, in the AFC uh, at the close of the season, a combined seven and one. Wow. Final eight, eight, you know, eight football games for the, for the two football teams. It's going to be an interesting matchup. What do you think if you had to give me a couple of keys, a couple of musts that the Cincinnati Bengals have to do to pull off this victory? What do you think, Kevin? Ball control, I think is number one is important. You know, um, Obviously, you know, Raiders have a, a, a pretty stout offense, but I don't think they're designed to to put up the big plays, the big yards, and the domination that um, you know the Bengals can put forth. I mean, the Bengals can 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 rush for a couple hundred yards. They could pass for five hundred. They could put up forty on you. I mean, they're I mean, it can go a lot of different ways. So I think that that they're well suited for that. And I believe they, you know, with defense coming out and, uh, you know, having some key stops and, and swinging the momentum to, to and keeping the ball, you know, the offense on the field, making plays and scoring points and you flip it to a one sided game. I think that, you know, we, we have a, an excellent shot at, at, at making it happen this week. And we'll get you out on this and appreciate you carving the time and, and talking about uh, your experience with the Raiders in the playoffs and, and seeing if the Bengal can pull it off here. That's a long I, time, January you know, of 1991. But these players, Kev, they, they have – that's that's other people's history. These guys don't even think about it. They don't even want to talk about it. That's the way you have to approach it, right? There's no question about it. I, you know, and it's kind of funny because obviously it's been in the news a lot here as of late. Right. But uh, I think I saw yesterday that they said there was only five players on the team that were alive during that game. <laughs> Talk about feeling old, brother. Oh, man. Unbelievable. I mean, I was 38 years old when you guys, uh, you know, that, that January of 1991. That's a couple of generations ago, it feels like, man. And Yeah, I mean, that's what C.J. Zahn was saying. We got a bunch of guys – that were born in in the in the two thousands, you know. Right. Nobody forget the nineteen hundreds, the two thousands. So it's well. It's a here's year. one for you to give you a little perspective. I got a text yeah. this morning. It says um, that in the history of the world, a text about right. Cincinnati went Bengals winning a football game has never happened. Right. Their last win was in nineteen ninety one, and the first text message was sent in nineteen ninety two. Talk about exactly. I, I got the same. I got the same message. That, that is crazy. That's crazy. Yeah, absolutely. Well, appreciate you. Thanks. Anytime. For appreciate your time. Appreciate your perspective. And uh, as a as a Bengals alum, it'd be great to see them win a playoff game, advance. And this team, you know, their whole attitude is, why not us? We know, you know, it's a young football team, but it's a talented football team, and their feeling is, why not us? No doubt about it. I mean, they've, they've stepped up, won some big games down the stretch. I mean, Kansas City, you yep. know, uh, we haven't played the best at home, but, you know, uh, beating them here, 
at home was a, was a big feat. So I think that uh, you're exactly right, brother. Looking forward to it. Have the best day you ever had, my man. Thanks for the visit. My pleasure. Talk to you soon. Yes, sir. At First Star Logistics, we're a very strict company that really puts the pressure on our employees. <laughs> Brakes? What are those? That's what I'm talking about. If you get the body right, then the mind's right. You yeah, know, you, know, you got to get that body right. That's right. right. Yes, sir. Become a star with a chance to earn the highest commission percentages in the industry as a freight broker agent. Check out FirstStarLogistics.com.